Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Animation, Fall 2021. Um, before we begin the, the reboot character, Mike, um, I wanted to um, show you a few little of the tweaks that I did on the table and lamp um, from Monday. Um, I added a couple of different uh, volumetric lights and to make sure that they work. And there are some settings if you do choose to use volumetric lighting that um, makes it a little bit of a challenge sometimes because it's, it's really hard to find with LightWave, um, you know, what buttons you have to push and what you have to turn on and turn off to make things work sometimes. So it, you might notice in my scene a little bit of mist or fog back here. Well, where that uh, uh, comes from is that the um, spotlight that I used, I added some volumetric lighting to that. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second, which is the final rendering. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch from camera view to perspective view. So you can see the volumetric lighting coming from the, um, the spotlight. Now, the reason that wasn't working for me the other day is very simple. And again, it requires tinkering with it sometimes when you forget why it's different for the point light, I don't know. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure at the bottom here, I have lights selected. Um, I don't want the light bulb at the moment. I want my light, which is the spotlight. And I'll go ahead and I'll click on the properties panel to bring it up. Now in the properties panel, you'll notice that I have the intensity fall off inverse distance by two. If I uncheck that, if I select that I turn that off, notice that the, um, um, the volumetric lighting goes away. That was the difference. You have to have inverse distance turned on. And when you do that, notice that the intensity of the light changes dramatically because it functions more like a real light when you have a fall off um, uh, enacted. Because when you, um, you know, think of it this way, that when you're really close to someone with a flashlight, the light seems, or even a candle, it seems pretty intense and it illuminates, um, you know, both of you. But the farther away the, um, you move, well, if you move the light farther away from, you know, whatever it is that you want to light, you know, lighten, then um, it just gets dimmer and dimmer. Well, that's what the fall off does. But if you turn fall off off, then no matter where you place the light, it maintains the same intensity. So why volumetric lighting works and doesn't work with um, inverse distance turned on and off, I don't know. It's just that's the nature of it. Now, when we switch to the point light or the light bulb, as I named it, notice um, I have inverse, inverse, um, inverse distance um, done. And if I turn that off, the same thing happens. It turns it off. So why I didn't see that the other day, I don't know. Now, when I turn it back on, you begin to see that volumetric lighting. And when I go back from perspective to the camera view, because we don't see the origin or the source of the, the um, spotlight, you, it, it's a wide cone of, of mist sort of that we see, okay? So that's pretty much it. I wanted to point that out. Um, it adds some subtlety to it. It adds, um, it makes the volume in the room, well, there is no room, but you get the sense that there's a room, makes it look um, a little bit more realistic. So I like using that from time to time, just a little bit. It's easy to overdo it. And I've overdone it with the lampshade, um, you know, the light inside the, the lamp 
itself that could be turned back, tweaked a little bit. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. <clears throat> and we're gonna switch from layout and I'm gonna go back to modeler. This is where we're gonna spend our time this morning and is in modeler. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll bring up the numeric requester. I'll hit N for numeric, bring that up. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I like working in quad view. You don't have to work in quad view. Um, if you want, if you hit D for display, whoops, come on, D, there we go. And you look at viewports. Right now we have the presets, okay? And these can be changed. So if we look at the end, we can switch to the interface. Um, all of these can be changed if you want. So I'm going to leave these alone for the time being, and I will come back to the backdrop for a minute in the bottom left. Because in order to do Mike, our reboot character, we have to use an image as a guide, or we don't have to, but it's helpful. So what I did is I did a simple Google search, and that's what you guys can do. And I just put in reboot Mike. And I made sure that I could see the images. The one that I want is this one right here. This gives a pretty much a frontal view and it's not too distorted. Um, it's the one that I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna download it. And it's a small image, but that's okay. <clears throat> if we can find a larger one, that would be great, but it doesn't have to be um, very big at all. We can always make it larger. It's we're only using it for proportions. So I'll just use it. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and see how big it shows up. And it doesn't do anything at all. So I'm going to go back. I want to go back. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. <clears throat> and I'm going to say save image as and I'll name it reboot and, it reboot, and it's probably a JPEG. Mike, reboot the TV on counter. Okay, I'll leave it at that, that's fine. I'll go to my desktop. Right, and I'm gonna save it in the image folder that I created inside our content folder. So here's content fall 2021. There's the images and I'll go ahead and I'll save it in there. Also, the wood um, texture that I used in my table and lamp, I probably should have saved that in there too. Um, anything, any of the content that you use in your files should be saved in your content folder. So you can see the JPEGs that I created um, and saved from rendering the table and lamp. Well, this is going to be saved in there too. This is the mic. So I'll save that there. So now that I'm done with that, I can bring it into <coughs> my, um, my into modeler. So what I want to do is I want to hit D for display again. Make sure that this is selected. D for display. And on the, the display options and the tabs, click on backdrop. And then what you want to do is in the bottom left, that's where I want to bring in the image. And you'll see here it says image none, because this is my front or back view. I'll load the image. Okay, so select load. Oh, don't, please, please, please don't slow down. And we're in images and we should have Mike. So it's not recognizing it. So that's not good. So I need to go back out of here. And I'm gonna open up Photoshop instead, and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. Um, so it's clearly there's a, a file type that it's not recognizing. Um, so that can be a problem. In the past, LightWave recognized TGA files, which are Targa files, um, and JPEGs. Now it should recognize Photoshop files as well, but sometimes it gets very picky 
and there are a limited number of file types that it likes. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to open uh, my Photoshop here. So that's something that you guys may have to do or use any other image editor that you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, come on, come on, come on. Everything is going to be sluggish today, like it was a couple of sessions ago. That's not good. That means I probably have too much um, going on here. So I'm going to close some of my files up here just to get hopefully free up some memory. Okay. And hopefully that will take care of that. And this is painful to watch this. It should, you know, it's taken a while to open it. Um, let me see if I have some other programs that are open that, no, I don't. Well, since we're not going to use um, layout, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quit layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit it. And maybe that will help save up some, some memory too. So let's go to Photoshop and that might help considerably. I'm going to go to File, Open. Come on, don't do this to me. File, Open. And let's go inside my content folder. So I have to go back to desktop. Um, let's look at this. And list. And there's the content. There are the images. Let's open mic. Come on. And it won't open there either. Why is that? Oh, shoot. I know why. OK. Um, my mistake here. It is a web image, and that needs to be converted. Um, I'm going to open. This is if you run into this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up Safari, and I'm going to look at it in Safari, and that should fix it. So let's try this again. My mistake. No, that's wrong. Let's try um, Firefox then. And maybe I'll have better luck with that because I don't, it's something that Google has done. They have um, changed the, the file types that they use for their images and they require that you um, convert them. So I'm going to go ahead and with Firefox, hopefully it doesn't make me do that. I'm going to go ahead and put in here um, reboot mic. I should get the same images. Let's see if I can download it. And here it is again. Okay. And this is a, this image is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go right click. And I'm going to save image as, and hopefully it will be the JPEG that I need. Um, yeah, it's going to be a JPEG image, so that'll be perfect. So we'll just name it Mike, and we'll put it inside the uh, um, folder that I want. So this is what you're going to have to do to be able to work. Go ahead and I'll save it in there. Now I'm good to go. I can go ahead and close. I don't need Photoshop. I'll go ahead and close it. And I'm going to come back to Modeler here. And again, um, D for display, display options. Make sure that backdrop is selected. Bottom left, and we got to load image. And we should have Mike. There's Mike. And click. And it appears down there. And it's OK that it's small. If you want to make it bigger, you can. But it's not necessary. We can go ahead and we can zoom in 
until we get a nice tight shot of it. So now we're ready to begin working on our, um, our project. It gives us, I mean, a, a pretty good frontal view of it. So it gives us the width and the height, but it doesn't give us the depth. And that's where we're gonna have to kind of guess at that. What I'm gonna do um, in this demonstration is I'm going to begin working with his head. We'll build out his arms and hands and then work with his um, uh, the underside of him, his body and his legs, and the speaker is his mouth. And then when we finish up the modeling of it, we'll um, work on refining the surfaces and put him inside um, an, an image. And I'll show you how to do that, make it look like he's actually inside the image. So let's start with um, the, his head. So if we look at it carefully, and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that today, and that's probably as far as we'll be able to get. Is that I'll start with a box. Okie doke. And I'm just going to click and drag in the corners like so until I get the approximate size. And then I'm going to go ahead and guesstimate the depth of it from the top view. And I'm going to go ahead here and zoom in a little bit. So I can see this even a little bit better. Move this down just a little bit. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, um, even on my screen. Um, I might want to tint that back a little bit, but I'm pretty good with that. And let's look at the depth of this. This is the side view. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back a little bit like so. Let's go ahead and zoom in on a perspective view and see how we, how that looks. Um, the front view needs to be a little bit wider, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and it's not important that it's not centered right now, but I want to get the basic proportions of this. Now, what I can do, and this is the way I'm showing you now to make this is not the desired way to make it. It really should be um, built organically. But it is a, a safe way of working if you feel uncomfortable with the next way that I show you. So what I want to do is you'll notice that he has rounded corners here. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a radius to this. How much? Whatever looks right. And you'll notice that it just bevels the edges. But if I change and I add radial segments down here, maybe six to eight, Six should be adequate. Notice that it rounds it off. So it's close, but not quite the same. And that's okay for right now. So I'm using my numeric requester to get the basic proportions of his head. Okay. I'm using the little widget. I'm also using the... Um, uh, some of the settings in the numeric requester to round off the corners. And when I'm happy with it, we'll go ahead and we'll turn off the box. Now, what I want to do next is that I need to add geometry to this to build in the frame and to build in his face. Okay, So that will be from the front here. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set um, up uh, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set a temporary surface. And But before I do that, I want to go ahead and I'm going to hit um, H because I want to stretch this out a little bit. There we go. H is for stretch. Turn off H. Just to tinker with the proportions just a little bit more. Okie doke. So the next thing that I want to do, as I said, is that I want to hit Q to create a temporary surface for this. And because we only have a handful of surfaces for him, I'm gonna make this one, I'll name it gold. Um, it could be brass, it could be body, it could be whatever you feel comfortable naming it. So I'm just gonna name it gold because it's probably the gold surface is what I will be using under the, when we send it over to layout, 
I'll probably use one of the presets for that. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select um, one of these here, just a, a gold color, a yellow color for it. So now I'm set to go. Now I'm ready to build and to, to add geometry to build in the, uh, the inset for the frame and his face. So to do that, this is what we do. And this was where we get a little bit more complicated or get more complex modeling techniques is that by default in the lower left-hand corner, we're, it's set to a point mode. We need to switch to polygon mode. And when we do, I'm gonna click in the, uh, the perspective view and I wanna select just that one polygon, that one front one. And with that one polygon selected, and you can see on mine, I have the surface normals. That's what these little sticks are, indicate that that's where it's turned, that it's facing. Um, that that's one, poly, that one polygon that's selected. So in order to build geometry off of that, if I want to, I can go ahead and I can move that now and watch what happens when I move it, okay? It's just, you know, moving and stretching everything with it. Hit Command or Control Z to undo. What I need to do is I need to add geometry so it, it leaves some of that intact, but <clears throat> um, moves or adds only the elements that I need added. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit B for bevel. Bevel is found under the multiply tab, but bevel is used a lot in building models, a lot, a lot, a lot. B for bevel. So um, that's where you'll find that under the multiply tab. So I'm gonna hit B for bevel. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna click. It doesn't matter which quadrant you click, but that adds geometry to it, okay? Then I'm gonna turn bevel off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this. And what I wanna do is when I do that, I wanna make sure that I resize it from the center of the selection. So <clears throat> to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit um, Shift H, or I can go to Modify and I can select Size right here. So Shift H or Size. And now it doesn't matter which viewport I'm in, I can click and drag and I can bring that in like so. Notice the extra edges in here. If you're not seeing that, I have texture wired selected up here. If you just have texture view, you won't see it. But I have texture wireframe so that I can see that. Now I can go ahead and I can move this back. So I can hit T for move again, and I can pull this back. And notice that I'm, I'm getting my frame here. Notice how it's not stretched to the, to the outermost polygons, but I've added that geometry so I can build my frame here. So let me undo that. Let's move that again. So move, and I'm gonna hold down the control key to constrain the movement, like so. And now I have the frame. And I want that frame to be black. So what I need to do now is turn off move and deselect that polygon. And now I need to select the polygons for the frame. So I'm going to, as I, let's go ahead and deselect that in the lower left-hand corner. If I click and I drag, in the, um, uh, um, I'm gonna make sure. I'm sorry, I'm kind of sluggish here. Um, if, if I click and I drag, I can select multiple polygons. Um, you have to be careful though, because I probably have polygons that I don't want selected. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more and move it. And I'm just gonna click to highlight it, hold down the shift key and click, hold down the shift key and click and hold down the shift key and click. So I just have the frame selected. 
So now I'll hit Q. And this time I'm going to name it black because this is going to be, I'll use this for um, parts of the speaker and the frame. And that's where we'll use the black. And I'll change this, uh, the black color. And I'll go ahead here and I'll select black. And I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. And I've got that done. So I've got that done. I've added some geometry. Now I need to add more geometry to get this bent back. So I'm gonna deselect the polygons. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select the polygon for um, the, the screen. And here's another way that we can do this. So I can go ahead and I can subdivide this. Um, because right now you can see that it's bent back a little bit here. Okay. And it's kind of has a slight curve to it. Well, I need, in order to do that, I need to break this down into many, many more polygons to get that result. So to be able to do that, I'm going to use what is called divide or under multiply, it should be subdivide. And that's down here. That's shift D. So if I click here, notice that I don't want metaform. I just want um, faceted. And I click OK. And you can see how it's subdivided. If I do that again, um, I think it was shift D, uh, maybe command D. Yeah, shift D was right. And it subdivides it again. And if I hit shift D, it subdivides it again. And before you know it, you have a fair number of these polygons that have been now subdivided. They're all selected. I'll do it one more time. Shift D, click OK. And I get a little tight, nice mesh. Now they're all selected and I wanna make sure that I can go back and I can select these whenever I want. So what I need to do is I need to turn this into a part. I don't have to, but it will be kind of nice if I do that. It will make it easier for me to make my selection. So because right now to select all of these, once I deselect them is gonna be difficult. Um, is it will be easy to, to miss some of them and not select all of them. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to selection. And what I can do is if I look over here, I should be able to say create set. And that's what I want to do. Select sets that those are selection sets. I want to actually create a selection set. So um, as you can see, there are tons of options here. So I want to be able to do that. Um, let me go back to detail and it might be here. You know what? Instead, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a part. It's down here at the bottom. I could go back and I could, if I go to sets, um, let's see, where is it? Um, selections. Um, I could create a selection set. So let me go back here. So I could do this, point selection sets. No, I don't want to do that. I am going to go back and I'm going to go back under detail. And instead I'm going to create what is called a part. So if I click here and I'll just name it screen. And I click okay. Now when I do select, okay, you can see how it's subdivided. If I want to select those, I can select them by hand but you run the risk of, as I said, not getting all of them. So instead, what I need to do is if I hit the W key, that brings up our polygon statistics. And you can see down here that I have parts. If I click here, you can see that we have a part named screen now, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and screen and I hit the plus sign and you can see that it is all selected. All of those pieces are selected. Now I can come back and I can bend this in any number of different ways. So to do that, 
we use a modify tool to be able to bend it. And the bottom modify tool that I'm going to use, and I want to make sure that I have the numeric requester up here, is I'm going to use um, the magnet tool. The magnet tool allows us to affect this in any number of ways. And so what I want to do is I'm going to control the fall off. And I'm going to use, for example, the radial fall off. <clears throat> You don't have to, you could use a linear fall off. There's a point fall off, there's a polygon fall off. There's a whole bunch of them. I kind of like the radial fall off. So I'm gonna make sure that radial is selected. Now I can control how this works. If I use this slider here, I get a nice soft parabolic kind of curve. And now what I need to do in order to, to control that fall off is that I need to use my mouse and I need to right click from the top view. And then I need to right click from the back or front view. And if you look at um, the right side here, I right click to move this into place. You can see it creates a little bubble here. And that bubble means that it will be affected in here only within that area selected. So now when I left click from the top view, and I move it back, notice that I get a nice little soft curve going on back here. So I could have done that. That's one way of doing that. I could have gone back and I could have um, subdivided this less and I could have moved that back. Um, you know, move fewer polygons back, but that would be one way of doing that. Now I can go ahead and I can turn that off. And I, with those polygons selected, I can hit Q and we'll name this screen. And I'm gonna make this kind of a light blue. So we'll make it a light blue, like so. Click okay, okay, and we have his monitor kind of face selected. So that's one way of doing it. Um, that's not the way that I'm going to finish it, but that's one way of building his face. It looks close to what we have here, but not quite as precise. So we're gonna use a more organic way of, of building this the next go around. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna deselect these polygons. And if you wanna look at this in textured view instead of textured wireframe, we can. You can see that it, you know, it's close and it looks okay, but not great. If I were to hit the tab key, notice that it gets, it's gonna get really wonky. It doesn't work. Remember I said before when we were working with the tab key, that you can run into problems if you have n-gons. And we have n-gons, we have polygons that exceed the four point limit. And so that makes it difficult to use sub patches. You need to have four point, it's best if you have four pointed polygons to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this file in my, I'll use save object as, and I'll save it in my object folder. And I'll just name it um, Reboot. Reboot um, Fall 2021. So he's saved in there. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to another layer. And I'm gonna show you a slightly different way of building this. And I don't know that we'll finish it today, but that's okay. So I need to go back to the Create tab. Um, at any time you want me to repeat or stop or go back, please let me know. So I'm gonna go back with the box and I'm gonna click and drag again from here. Whoops, don't have it selected, there we go. And I have to reset everything here. So I'm gonna go back because it goes back to the last setting that I used. So I'm gonna go back to action, reset. 
<clears throat> and notice that it's making this huge, huge, huge one meter box. I don't need it to be quite so big. So I'm going to go back and just deselect that. And I'm going to create again. I'm going to click and drag, click and drag until I get the basic proportions that I need. Let's go ahead and um, pull that back a little bit. We'll make the width a little bit wider here. So I'm trying to get the basic proportions that he has. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. And that looks pretty good. Those are pretty close to the proportions of his head. Now what I want to do is I'm going, I'm not, I'm not, this time I'm not going to add radial segments, but I am going to add segments. So along the X, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add maybe six. And then along the Z and X, I'm going to add maybe four. Okay. Notice that if I switch from texture to texture wired, you begin to see the subdivisions here. Okay. So I think this will work for us. This will work pretty well. So if I'm satisfied with that, I'll click and I'm going to go ahead and fix the box and put it in place. And now what I want to do is I'm to work organically. I can hit the tab key and notice I get my rounded corners. That's precisely what I wanted. And now what I can do is I can use the bevel tool or I can use smooth shift, which is another way of adding geometry. And we can go ahead and um, continue to build our, our uh, head here. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. And then we'll probably have to finish this up um, next week. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this group of polygons right here. I'm just clicking and dragging so that they're selected. And now what I need to do is I need to stretch it out. So I'm going to go ahead and so I can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to hit H for stretch. And from the front view, I can go ahead and I can click and I can drag to stretch that out a little bit so that I, you know, focus on the proportions that I see. Now I'm going to click and drag to the right so that that stretches out a little bit. Okay. So I'm, you know, trying to work and get the proportions that I see. And if I, if I don't get them, I can always go back and tweak them, but it's best as you're building it that you work pretty closely with the proportions that you want. Um, sometimes the more complex the model becomes, the more difficult it is to make the final tweaks. So now what I'm doing is I have his basic frame here. And now I'm ready to build that um, black insert frame inside it. So I'm going to use the, instead of bevel, I'm going to use a similar tool because I have, before I only had one polygon selected. Now I have eight polygons. So I want them to behave as a single unit. So what we do in multiply, instead of using bevel, I use something called smooth shift, which is right here. And I do the same thing. I can click in any one of the four quadrants. And notice how that just added that geometry to it. Now I can hit T for move. And I can pull this back a little bit. And you can see I have, this is a little bit more rounded now. Now I'm going to fix this up here. Well, in the sides in a little bit, and you'll see that it will work a little bit nicer. It'll be a little bit nicer. So now what I can do 
is I can hit um, smooth shift again. Okay, so instead of move, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use smooth shift. I'm going to click again. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shrink it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit H. And I'll go ahead and from the back quadrant, I'll move this in a little bit like so. And in a little bit like so. And now I can go ahead if I want. Let me see if I can. Let's go ahead and make it even smaller, like so. Like so. And now I can pull this back. I can hit T for move and pull this back just a little bit, like so. So this is looking a little bit more like that, but there's some tweaking I still have to do. Okay. So as you'll notice that it's sort of balloony or bubbly along the sides here. And that's something that's missing from here. So I need either I needed to go back and not pull that quite so far, or let's try to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select some of these points and stretch them out. So instead of polygon mode, what I can do is I can switch to point mode. So I need to deselect this for the time being. Uh, um, what do I have? I have move selected. So it's easy to forget what I have selected here. Um, I'm going to undo a couple of steps. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to use the stretch again. I'm going to pull this in, in just a little, like so. There we go. I think I pulled it out a little bit too far before. So turn off stretch. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit smooth shift again. So let's go ahead and use under multiply. Let's go ahead and select smooth shift. And again, just click. And that looks a little bit better. Now I can go ahead and I can hit T for move. And I can, from the top view, I can pull this back a little bit. That's looking a little bit better, a little bit better. Okay, so I had just stretched it out a little bit too far. And if I need to tweak it, I can. So here's his frame, the black frame here. And I'm going to have to go back in and I'm going to have to select the polygons in order to do that. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and use smooth shift again. So I'm going to go ahead back under multiply, smooth shift, and click again. And that adds the geometry. I need to resize it. So I'm going to hit H4, <coughs> stretch, pull it in a little bit. Stretch it in a little bit, like so. And I get about like so. I'm going to hit T for, for move. And from the top view, I'll move it back a little bit. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Turn off move, deselect the polygons. And I still need to make the little bubble. So I'm going to go ahead and before I go too much more, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to um, create the surfaces for these. So I'm going to hit Q. And I already have some of these. So I'm going to go ahead and select gold. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to select these polygons here. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and click on them. There aren't that many. And I'm going to make go ahead and um, make uh, this a new surface. So hit uh, Q. And I already have it black. So I'll go ahead and I'll make that black. And then we'll go ahead and I'll select these polygons. I'll deselect those. 
And again, I don't have that many polygons, so I can click and drag, and make sure that all of these are selected and hit Q, and this will be the screen. So that's done. So that looks, this is looking much better. I still have some tweaking to do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna manipulate some points instead of the polygons in order to get the bubbly kind of look that I'm going for. What I can also do is um, if I'm not satisfied, I can go ahead and I can select all of these polygons in here. And before I, you know, I'm just clicking and dragging here. I make sure that they're all selected. And if they're all selected, I can go ahead and I can hit H for stretch. I can stretch these out just a little bit like so. I think these proportions look a little bit better now. I'm looking at, uh, at the same time, I'm looking in the lower left hand quadrant to get the basic proportions. And I think that is looking a little bit better. There we go. So it's looking much better than the last one that I made. And if I look at this one, if I go back to here, it's too, it's too machine-like, too mechanical. This one is a bit more organic looking, so it has a softer feel to it. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch from um, polygons to points. I mentioned that I was gonna do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's select this point, hold down the shift key and click up here and select that point. And now what I wanna do is I wanna stretch those so that I get more of a, a bubbly kind of rounded feel. So I'll have to, I'm selecting them from the perspective view, but I'm gonna actually manipulate them from the back view. So now if I hit H for stretch and I click from here, notice how it's bubbling it up. Now I want a smoother transition, so I need to add more points. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna select this point and this point, come on. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna switch from texture view to um, wireframe so I can see what I'm selecting here. So sometimes you have to select views. So, uh, you know, manipulate it. Um, I'm gonna switch to texture wired. Maybe that will be easier for me. Yeah, uh, select again. Oh, I know why, because I have stretch selected. I don't want stretch selected. I'm gonna go ahead and select. There we go. Select. Let's see. I'm moving over the, the intersection between the horizontal and the vertical lines. And now I can go ahead and I can hit stretch. And then from the back view, I can stretch that out a little bit to get the overall look that I'm going for. So just a slight manipulation. So it's just slightly curved and I'll do the same with the bottom. So I'm gonna hit H for stretch and um, to deselect it, deselect those. I'm gonna select my points again. So I'll click here, hold down the shift key, click down here, click here. I'm holding down the shift key while I do this, here and here. And now I'll go ahead and I'll hit stretch, stretch again from the um, back view and we'll stretch this out a little bit. Like so. And that's looking pretty good. Now I just want maybe, um, the sides here to be pulled in just a little bit and manipulated. Um, I probably from the side, I also want it to be moved out a little. Notice how flat that is. So probably what I need to do, let's go ahead from, let's work with the, um, 
the right view here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit T for move. And I'm going to pull these forward just a little bit to give it a little bit of um, depth. There you go. That looks a little bit nicer. And I probably should have done that with those too. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn off T for move. Deselect those points. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to reselect these points again. Move this down a little bit. There we go. Make sure that I have them selected. It's very small, the little orange, orange points. And then from the side view, hit T for move, and I'll pull it forward just a little bit like I did with the bottom part. So it's, it has kind of a bubbly, soft, cartoony feel to it. Just very subtle. Okay, um, I'm done moving it, deselect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move some of these points out. So I'll select this one and I'm going to move it over. I'll hit T for move. And I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Like so, and I'm going to pull it forward a little bit from here. So it's a little bit bulging, bulging like I did with the top and the bottom. And that looks pretty good. Now I'll do the same with uh, um, the other side. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit um, turn off T for move, deselect the point. Now I'm going to select the point here. And with that selected, I'll go ahead and I'll move it in a little bit. So again, T for move. Um, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. Move it forward a little bit. Until I get the look that I'm going for. And that's coming out pretty decent. If I want these to be a little bit more, move them in just a little bit more, I can do so. So with T move, I'll pull that in just a little bit more. And I'm going to deselect the T for move. I'm going to go back and select the other point and pull it in a little bit. There we go. T for move. And over from Top view, move that in a little bit. Try to make them as symmetrical as possible. And we haven't worked with symmetry yet. Now this is still a little bit fatter than theirs. So I'm gonna turn off T for move. Okay, I'm gonna deselect the points. So I'm gonna switch back to polygons. And again, I'm gonna select all of these again. And I probably should have made a part out of all of this. Wouldn't hurt. So I'm just clicking and dragging, making sure that I have all the polys selected that I want. And I'm going to stretch it out again. So I'm going to hit H for stretch. And again, from the front view, I'll stretch it out a little bit like so. And up a little bit like so. And that is pretty darn close. That's about exactly where I want it. I'm happy with that. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hit um, turn off stretch. You select, I'm going to shrink these down a little bit. So I'll select these polygons. And I'll hit H and I'm going to shrink them, stretch it in a little bit, like so. So it looks a little bit more like the example that I have here. Let's uh, switch from texture wired to texture. And that's looking pretty good. So this looks almost identical to theirs now. So this is a very different way of working than. Um, than the first version. So we're working organically now. And it's a lot of um, you know, very subtle manipulation, manipulating points, manipulating polygons. I'm using the stretch. I could use size. 
Um, instead, I'm using the move tool and I'm switching back and forth from top view to perspective view, to right view, to the front view. Um, and I don't know that as I'm doing that, I'm explaining it as clearly as I probably should, but um, you can see that uh, the organic way is really the way that you want to make this thing work. Now, if I wanted these polygons to look a little bit more rigid, I would probably use smooth shift once again. So under multiply, if I select smooth shift and I click that again, see how that stretched it and it tightened it up just a little bit. Let me switch to um, texture wireframe again so you can see that. And I'll go ahead and I'll um, again hit H for stretch. And we'll stretch this back out just a little bit and then tighten it up just a little. And um, again, turn off that. And let's go ahead. Um, actually, you know what? Let me do that again. I don't want to move it from perspective view. That's kind of that's um, a mistake on my part. I'll go ahead and hit H again. I'm going to do it from the, the, the back view here. There we go. Now I'll turn off stretch and let's go back to just textured view. And that tightens it up a little bit better by adding a little bit of geometry. Maybe I did it too much. So let's undo. And let's look at it again and then I'll be done for today. Texture wired. And I can come back and we can do this again if you want. Um, next Monday, just to make sure that everybody understands what I'm doing. Um, hit stretch again in the front view. There we go, just a little bit to tighten it up. And let's go back here and switch to texture view. Yeah, that's looking better. You get to see see what's going on here. Okie doke. Well, before we leave today, um, do you have any questions for me about anything that I've covered that you want me to repeat, or I can repeat it all all of it again on Monday if you want. This is probably one of the hardest things to get acclimated to, to use bevel, to add geometry, but to think in advance. I mean, how did I know to use, to subdivide when I was building my box, six units, four and four, only because I've done this several times. Um, if you discover that you've added too much geometry or not enough, then you're gonna have to go back and undo it and then try a, a different number of units. And it's only been over time that I've been able to experiment and to figure, okay, that's about the number, about, about the right amount of geometry that I need here. And then even as many times as I've you know, done this, um, to determine how much you wanna stretch and to get the proportions to match the photograph that you're looking at. And it's extremely helpful to have the photograph to use as a guide um, for proportions. Proportions in drawing are everything. You know, the relationship of the width, the height to the depth. Um, and that's what's going to give you, um, you know, if you're trying to copy something like we are, you know, to get that realism or to get that, um, the look that we're going for, to make it as close to the, the original as possible. So... Yeah, so the, the question is, so for this week, if you finish the table and lamp, just work on the head. And if you have questions on Monday, I'll come back and I'll be happy to redo it. Um, to do the arms and the hands are very easy. The legs aren't easy. They'll take a little bit more work. But yeah, for this week, um, just work on the head. So you first remember that what you need to do is you need to download the image. Um, of the reboot character. And then remember you hit D 
and click on the, for display options and you're going to go ahead and you're going to select the backdrop and you you want the um, bottom left one so that's where i put re the reboot character then just you don't have to resize it just resize your screen to make it fit and then we'll be ready to build the other parts coming next week so I got to make sure that I, this is saved and we can call it a day. Okay. Yes, no. Okie doke. Um, yeah, if you're, if there are no questions, then I'm going to say goodbye and I'll, I'll stop the recording. And I will see all of you um, Monday. If you have questions, um, let me know. I'll answer them today or tomorrow. And if not, you know, we, oh, we have a long weekend. I think um, Monday is the seventh, isn't it? Or isn't Monday um, Labor Day? Okay, Monday is the sixth. But I think Monday is Labor Day, so we don't have um, class. I'll check on that. But Friday, I will update my This Week in class, and I'll let you know. So we may have to con continue with this on Wednesday instead of um, Monday. Yeah, Labor Day is the 7th, but Monday, you know, the holidays are always on Mondays and Fridays, but Mondays. So I think Monday is a holiday. Okie doke. Okay, well, I'm gonna again say goodbye. I'm gonna pause the recording.